So welcome to a quick tour of the Unreal Editor. In this video, we're going to create ourselves a basic C++ project, and then we're going to add a couple of objects to the scene, make sure we understand how default scenes work so that next time you load Unreal, you get the same stuff on the screen as you had before. Scenes, levels, and maps are all basically interchangeable terms. And then we're going to have a play with the interface and customize it. You see my interface is looking a little different. So let's dive in and get that done now. So here we are back at the Epic Games Launcher. So hopefully by now your Unreal Engine has finished downloading. If it hasn't, it'll be telling you here and slowly filling up this logo with black from the bottom to the top. Now, if you can't see any of this, then firstly check you're on the right tab. You may be on one of these other tabs along here. So let's make sure we're on the UE4 tab and that we're in the library section of the UE4 tab, not the community section. Then you should see engine versions and up here we have 4.2. 10.1 or yours may be later than that and that's fine as long as it's at least 4.10 we are good to go so let's launch unreal for the first time you may get a windows firewall warning here when this opens now by the way i should say if you're on a mac i'm going to be covering the rest of the course on windows so you're going to have to fend for yourself in terms of the differences but they're not huge the differences are not particularly massive so that's it. You can actually close the Epic Games Launcher if you want. And we're at a screen like this. I just maximize it. Yours will be a lot smaller than this. As I said, I'm on a very low resolution. What we want to do firstly is select C++, not Blueprint. These are just defaults, by the way. I mean, any project can pretty much be turned into any other. But we're just going to start with C++, basic code. But I'm going to turn the starter content here off. So no starter content. So we want C++ up the top right or selected on this tab, basic code these settings as default but no starter content just for simplicity pick yourself a sensible project folder I suggest you put all of the sections under one folder and then organize them nicely I'm just going to call mine section underscore you can't have spaces by the way so underscore zero one and I'm going to create the project so the first time you do this it take a little while depends on the speed of your machine because your compiler is already installed and running ie Visual Studio or Xcode, then this code generation should go swimmingly. If you get any errors down here, then you need to go back and watch the videos about installing your integrated development environment. But because we've already done that, I'm hoping that this bit will go without a hitch for you and that when it'll finish compiling your C++ source code, it's basically building you your own version of the Unreal Editor, which you could customize if you wanted to. But um, we're not going to be doing that, certainly at this stage. So we let that happen, and then we're going to see what... Unreal looks like on the inside and learn a little bit about saving and scenes and how that all works. So scenes, you may hear the term level, they're all the same type of idea. So if it doesn't look like this for you, you can go to the window menu, reset layout, and then OK. So it's window, layout, reset layout, and then OK. And when you do that, it will restart the editor and you'll be back to where we are. But I'm at the default, so I'll leave it as it is. Cool, so let's do something very simple. Let's find the modes window, which is modes here. If you lose any of these things, you can always come here to window and then have a look through and see if you can find modes, which is there, and turn it on. See, but modes is on the left-hand side. Let's go and find yourself a basic, say, cube, and just drag it and drop it in the scene. You can move it with these arrows, up, down, left, right, etc. And let's just save our project. Now, when you click save, it's saying save level as. So the project name is section 01. You see at the top here it says section 01. But the, the level <coughs> or the scene inter used interchangeably is called untitled at the moment. And star means something has changed on it. So if we save, we're saving, as it says, the current level to disk. Let's do that. Let's just call this level 1. Now, I need to maximize this because I'm pushing the limits of resolution. I want it to be as low as possible so you can see everything. Level 01, okay? So I've saved that level. Let's go ahead and quit the project altogether now. Go back to the Epic Games Launcher library. And then where it says My Projects, you'll see you have a version 4.10 project called Section 1. Let's reopen it. And let's see what happens when we reopen this. <gasps> Where's my cube gone? Assessed in disaster. I can't see it. Now it turns out that if you double-click level 1, that of course it will then load level 1. But what's happening is it's not loading level 1 by default. Okay, so what we want to do is change that so that it does load, so that you know how to control the level that it loads by default. And then we'll make sure that works in a challenge for you in a moment. So let me show you how to change it. What we need to do is go up to the Edit menu and then Project Settings. So Edit Project Settings. And in here, we're going to have Maps and Modes. Now, Levels, Scenes, Maps, you need to kind of consider those things all the same. So there we go. Now, 
default maps, game engine, game default map, but editor startup map. That's the challenge, is that it is the template default. When you start the editor, it opens up a new blank map. That's fine, but if we want to go back to the work we were working on, look, you put the down arrow and then level one. So there's a project level called level one. Select that and close, and then close your project. Let's try again. Simple stuff, right? But this is the sort of thing that will catch you out in Unreal if you don't get it right from the beginning. So we come back here. Ah, we have a cube. Okay, I've got a challenge for you. Here it is. I want you to add a second object to the scene, save the scene, close the Unreal Editor, reopen it and ensure the object is still there, and then congratulate yourself that you have some semblance of control over the Unreal Engine. So go ahead, pause the video and do that simple challenge, getting a second object from the Modes panel now. Welcome back. So let's do this thing. I'm going to go to modes and I'm going to find, a, say, a sphere, stick a sphere on there, lift it up a bit because it offends me sticking halfway through the floor. I'm going to save my scene, level, map, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> double click back into my project from the Epic Games launcher and they're both there. So level one is now loading as the default. Simple stuff, but we now know how to make sure our changes persist. Now, I want to talk to you quickly about the layout of the engine here. You can change a lot of things. If you're from Unity, for example, you might want to just, or you're on a very low screen resolution, you might want to move things around. So you have little grippers here that you can move. And if you're careful, then you can move where these things are. But you need to understand how it works. So have an experiment, because remember, you can always go reset layout. So I want you to start grabbing tabs like the world outliner and the details. And uh, let's just move things around. I'm going to move it around to something I'm more familiar with, which is a unity style. I'm going to lose modes. I'm going to put my world outliner on the on the left hand side there. I'm going to leave the content browser where it is, leave the details where it is. That's equivalent to an inspector. So if you click on something, you see all its details on the right. The world outliner basically reflects all the things that are in this level here. So it's a one-for-one -one correspondence. You click something there, you see it here. This is just like Unity, if you have any familiarity with that. If you don't and you don't even know what Unity is, don't worry. Unity is a different game engine that just, I'm reassuring you that this is fairly industry standard. Lots of these things work in a, in a similar way, which is good. All right, you can move your panes around with the divisions in between them. And really, this is just a question of you experimenting. So go ahead, experiment with all your panes and panels. If you have a very low resolution like I do, then you may want to change things around a little bit. So you can double click on this little um, yellow bit at the top left, and that will give you a different type of handle so that you can move things around, okay? If you get in a complete mess like this, window, reset layout, okay. And then... Do we want to save the level? Well, sure, that doesn't matter. If you're changing your layout, then it's going to say, do you want to save the level before I go and reload the editor with a new layout? That's fine. All right, so we're back to there. I'm just going to adjust mine a little bit to be um, outliner on the left. I'm going to lose modes. I'm going to detach this toolbar at the top, then drag it carefully. See, it depends where you let go there. Then the toolbar goes across the top because I'm on such low resolution. And this is a layout that I'm pretty comfortable with. I'm going to be able to see all the things in the toolbar I need. I've got plenty of room down on my details on the right hand side and I'm good to go. Now bear in mind that you can also right click any tab and say hide tab. So we don't really need it saying world outliner etc. So if we don't need that we can hide tab and you can double click to show tab. So that's up to you how you want to lay your screen out. All right. So viewports. I for now I'm going to leave all these tabs on for me apart from the toolbar so that when I refer to things, I can guide you with my voice. I can say, go to the world outliner or go to the content browser or to the details tab. But just bear in mind, you can, you can right click on a tab and hide a tab like that. And then you can click at the top left, the yellow to resume. I think you've got the idea. You can now customize the editor to your needs. When you finish doing that, then just go to window and save layout. And then you only get one layout, but you've saved your layout now. Okay, so you've got a choice between your saved layout and to reset the layout back to the default. By the way, these windows can be detached completely and put in other places like this, a floating window. So there it is floating. And if you want to get it back, well, then just experiment or reset your layout. It's probably good to get in a bit of a mess and then to learn how to sort yourself out because... That is all learning to command the interface. That's it. You have an, un, uh, an introduction to Unreal. When you're happy with your layout, just quit altogether, and we'll see you in the next section.